Hello, my name is Tanesa Costa, and I am doing my presentation in pharmacology. I am discussing management of low testosterone in individuals with hypertension and hypertriglyceridemia. Our patient, Sean, is a 41-year-old African-American male who is currently experiencing fatigue, increased weight gain, and decreased sexual desire. His past medical history includes hypertension and hypertriglyceridemia. He is on ezetimibe, niacin SR, and a combination of hydrochlorothiazide and lisinopril that is used to treat hypertension. His latter treatments do not seem to correlate with these symptoms, indicative of an ailment other than his current ones. As for the hormonal profile, the patient exhibits a slightly decreased level of testosterone. While other hormonal levels, TSH, FSH, LH, and PSA remain normal. The main issues are whether Sean needs testosterone treatment and whether his current medications are causing him the symptoms. In this presentation, we will discuss the use of testosterone therapy, the possibility of changing medications, and the overall management, which is essential to resolve his issues. Epidemiology of low testosterone. Erectile dysfunction is moderate in prevalence in the general population, with rates ranging from 2% to 12% in men aged 40 to 79 years of age with low testosterone. It becomes even more common in individuals with such conditions as hypertension, obesity, or metabolic syndrome, which makes Sean's story important. Testosterone levels is one of the critical factors, and age is another influential factor since testosterone levels reduce with age. Chronic illnesses such as diabetes or cardiovascular disease further elevate the risk. Furthermore, hypertensive drugs such as diuretics may also have an impact in reducing the levels of testosterone in the body, perhaps explaining Sean's symptoms. Knowledge about such factors will assist in identifying the appropriate approaches for medical intervention. Anatomy and physiology of testosterone. Testosterone is mainly synthesized in the testes through the Leydig cells and a small percentage in the adrenal glands. This hormone is essential in controlling several functions in the body, such as sexual desire, energy, and muscular body mass. It will also work to regulate mood, to prevent depression, and impact fat distribution and bone mass. Testosterone also contributes to erythropoiesis, which produces red blood cells and male fertility. A low level of testosterone, which was evident in Sean's case, has an adverse effect on many of these areas, which explains why Sean usually felt tired, had gained some weight, and had little interest in sex. Knowledge of all of these physiological functions is essential in deciding whether the patient is a candidate for testosterone replacement therapy or not. Clinical signs and symptoms of low testosterone. Low testosterone causes several symptoms, 
which can reduce the quality of life, such as constant fatigue, decreased sexual desire, inability to maintain an erection, weight gain, and depression. Moreover, muscle to fat ratios are reduced, which poses a problem regarding muscle strength and power. In addition to these signs, other medical issues are heightened when one is experiencing low levels of testosterone for a prolonged period. And this can include cardiovascular diseases, type 2 diabetes, metabolic syndrome, and other comorbidities. Based on Sean's current signs and symptoms, many issues coincide with some low testosterone symptoms, which supports further assessing if there's any benefit of testosterone replacement therapy or other measures to stop further decline in Sean's health status. Sean's Diagnostic Workup. The diagnostic plans for low testosterone levels include an essential physical examination and laboratory investigation. Sean's results show that his serum testosterone level is 180 nanograms per deciliter below the normal range of 193 to 836 nanograms per deciliter. Other hormonal markers, such as TSH, thyroxine, FSH, LH, and PSA have normal levels, thus eliminating thyroid disorders, pituitary abnormalities, or prostate problems. Repeating the testosterone level measurement on the second morning is mandatory according to the clinical guidelines because the hormone level varies over 24 hours. Also, it is required to reveal the symptoms that could be present such as mild, moderate, or severe fatigue, weight gain, and decreased sex drive before starting the treatment. This evaluation process enables correct identification of the problems and consequently formulates an appropriate management plan. Now we are going to do a medication review. Reviewing the list of Sean's current prescriptions is essential because it helps to see what medications may be influencing his current symptoms. The use of hydrochlorothiazide and lisinopril as an antihypertensive can lead to fatigue as well as erectile dysfunction, which may explain his symptoms of decreased energy and sexual activity. Also, niacin SR used for managing triglyceride levels leads to weight gain and additional fatigue, which also affects Sean. However, azetamide does not have any relationship with fatigue or sexual dysfunction. Therefore, exclusion or minimal causation might be expected from it in precipitating his symptoms. Understanding these medication-related effects will help us make necessary adjustments and recommendations concerning Sean's treatment plan. Is the patient suitable for testosterone therapy? Several factors must be considered when deciding whether Sean should receive testosterone therapy. Testosterone replacement is usually recommended when the side effects, including fatigue and reduced sexual desire, worsen the patient's quality of life 
and other possible causes are excluded based on relevant investigations. Furthermore, testosterone therapies, actual and potential benefits should be weighed against the risk, such as cardiovascular events. Considering Sean's low testosterone levels and the presence of their symptoms, it is possible to think about treatment. However, it is also important to continue monitoring patients during administration of the therapy to measure the therapeutic effectiveness, as well as providing adequate intervention for the side effects. Testosterone therapy options. The pharmacological approach to managing low testosterone depends on the treatment method. Testosterone can be administered through different routes. The testosterone gel is commonly used and must be applied on the skin daily to gradually influence, release, and stabilize hormones. Testosterone skin patches are another form that can be applied directly onto the skin and are changed daily, thus another convenient form of testosterone application. For those wanting to use fewer applications, one can take intramuscular injections administered every 10 to 14 days. However, Irrespective of the selected approach, the PSA, hematocrit, and lipids should be checked at least every 6 to 12 months of treatment to avoid side effects. This active monitoring produces future risks that, in turn, evaluate the effectiveness of the therapy in alleviating the symptoms of treatment. Non-pharmacological management. Non-pharmacological measures form a significant layer of managing low testosterone and enhancing general well-being. Lifestyle modifications, such as incorporating a well-balanced diet, weight loss, and regular exercise can help boost testosterone levels and positively affect energy, mood, and overall quality of life. Also, counseling is useful in the psychological aspect since Sean may have other emotional problems and interpersonal difficulties attributed to his symptoms. It is also important to evaluate and minimize the treatment of complications like hypertension and hypertriglyceridemia, and possibly regulate his medications. With this non-pharmacological approach, alongside the pharmacological treatment plan, we can provide optimal, tailor-made, effective management of Sean's improvement. Adjusting Sean's current medications. A change in the medications that Sean is presently on is essential in alleviating his symptoms and enhancing his well-being. We would replace HCTZ with an ACE inhibitor, which also effectively controls hypertension, with the advantage of minimizing fatigue and erectile dysfunction, commonly linked to diuretics. Likewise, the routine use of angiotensin receptor blockers, which are very safe drugs, can also be used. Combining symphostatin with ezetimibe may be useful for treating hypertriglyceridemia because statins reduce triglycerides and do not cause fatigue, unlike niacin. Ezetimibe can also be used as monotherapy for lipid disorders, 
since it's been approved for clinical use. It is necessary to explain these changes to Sean and what changes he can expect to see as a result of this treatment, as well as possible side effects that he might face in the future while being treated so that he would be active in the overall treatment process and understand what is being done regarding his health care. Patient education. In the case of Sean, personal education concerning his low testosterone levels and health is essential in its management. This is the reason that it is necessary to discuss the common side effects of testosterone therapy. Some of the side effects can include increased acne, mood swings, and an increase in the number of red blood cells. It will be necessary to stress scheduling follow-up appointments. These appointments will help to control any of the side effects that Sean may be experiencing and also to administer the testosterone therapy. Moreover, healthy lifestyle practices contribute to improving optimal therapy outcomes. Helping Sean set weight loss goals is important because doing so will increase his testosterone levels and improve his overall health. Also to be included, physical advice such as avoiding regular consumption of alcohol and smoking cessation helps Sean to maintain his health care goals. It also ensures that he becomes an active participant in managing his condition by attaining full control and cooperation in the goals of his treatment plan. Concluding Sean's therapy. The treatment plan for Sean needs proper supervision and follow-up care to check for side effects and the treatment progress. Blood tests will measure testosterone levels, PSA, hematocrit, and lipid profiles. For the first year of therapy, blood tests will be made every three months and every six to 12 months. If side effects or abnormal lab values appear, the treatment strategy will be modified accordingly. Monitoring will also involve determining the patient's symptoms to evaluate whether therapy brings about significant positive changes in energy, weight loss, and sex drive. Moreover, treating his blood pressure and triglyceride issues has substantial potential to benefit his